All right. Well, well, Carl, why don't you begin? Most of the people on my channel know me, so why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, so my name's Carl Killow. Uh, I became interested in Dr. Peterson specifically, oh, probably a little over a year ago. I was watching a lot of him on uh, Stefan Molyneux uh, as I was starting to wonder why all my atheist friends were uh, were so far progressive. <laughs> and I couldn't, couldn't, quite, couldn't quite get with, uh, that one around my head. Um, and so I, I kind of went from there. And, and when, when Dr. Peterson's uh, book, uh, 12 Rules for Life, came about, I, had, I think I had gone through the biblical lecture se series. And that opened my mind up enough to help me go from extreme radical militant atheism all the way to now I, I believe in everything that the Bible says. Just really? Verbatim. Yeah. When did this happen? Um, so the final leap into God's arms, as I like to put it, it was, was probably really just about, about a month ago. And, but slowly getting closer and closer to the point where I could make that final step, which I, I believe very wholeheartedly has to be done by yourself. Uh, that took quite a bit, uh, and I like, like your lobster back there behind your head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His name is Bucko. <laughs> That's Bucko. He's our mascot for our meetup. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess I, I, I got up to, Dr. Peterson got me to the point where I could go, okay, well, there's something for me here. So let me start reading the Bible. Let me start going to church. And then I was like, okay, well, the more I did that and the more I started, especially living by rule eight, which was tell the truth or at least don't lie, then I really got to the point where I could start to see how my actions would come back to me directly it, it, in, in, in a very fair and almost trustworthy manner. And what, what do I mean by that? I mean that instead of being scared of speaking the truth, because I, I had been for a very long time with a number of people because I wanted to uh, tell them what they wanted to hear rather than what I actually believed. Uh, and so I would always go around life like it was full of minefields and I had to be careful what I said there and I had to be cautious of that thing. And, Oh wait, did I say that to this person? And how are they going to react? And so I let all of that go. And I just started speaking what seemed to be true to me or at least, or I wouldn't get involved in the conversation at all. Wow. And, and when I started doing that, I started getting these massive red pill moments. And by that, I mean, expecting Morpheus to call you on the phone kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Like, that didn't just happen. Yeah. And I think it has something to do with being very plugged into the things that your unconscious wants you to know about. Hmm. And the less... I don't know, this is a simplistic way to think about it, but the less time that you spend wasting brain cycles on what I'm supposed to say and saying just what is, the more likely you are to say something that's true. And I think there's something really healing about that uh, in a way that I never really understood before until I actually started doing it. Well, well talk to me about how this has changed your life in ways that someone say someone who couldn't let's say a deaf person couldn't hear what you have to say but right. watch what you do right right yeah okay so what did i do well the one of the big catalysts was when i was teaching um i i had been really excited about the last job that i took and i was hoping that this was going to be the the pinnacle of of great stuff what kind of stuff did you teach and so i was teaching i i i taught uh, biology and anatomy two years ago and this last year i was breaking into a school that uh, i was hoping to be, to be teaching at and i was teaching uh logic high school and, college junior was, college. yeah so the high two school. years ago was junior high or sorry high school and okay. and last year was junior high okay and so and so that was that was a fun awakening for me because it was oh well let me go try something new and wow i really like this something new and so i went walking into the the forest where it seemed most dark because teaching in front of a bunch of people seemed like a very scary thing at, at the beginning but when i actually went and did it i got a lot of reward out of it um so yeah what did i what did i actually end up doing well the big catalyst was that 
I got this job with high expectations thinking that, okay, well, if I just throw my all into this, uh, into this career, that will define me. That will make me a, make it so that I'm doing the best job that I possibly can in order to help the most people. And I, and I had really convinced myself of that. And then I get feedback from the place where I'm working and sell, telling me, well, no, you're obviously not doing that well enough because we, we don't want you to come back next year. Wow. <laughs> so what do you do with that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the realization had to come to my mind that, um, well, obviously something, I'm not doing something that's, that's right because, well, the meeting went down something like this. I'm expecting to go in and, and have a really great conversation about what I'm going to do next year or the things that I'm excited about. And the conversation goes, well, guess what? You're not coming back. And so I asked them why, what's the deal with that? And they say, well, because you were asked to step up and you didn't. And I say, well, oh. could you clarify that a bit? Yeah. And they couldn't. Mm. So what does that mean? And, yeah. you know, so there's, there's a whole big pile of chaos to deal with right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how did I deal with it? Well, I, I took a really close look at myself because either an entire institution was wrong or I was, and it was a lot easier to look at myself than, than to look at the school. Let me just Maybe pause you there. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I didn't ramble. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to commend you because what you did right there, is 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 takes courage and it takes honesty that is unusual because the the reaction from most people is they're idiots they're fools they're you know blame that them was but my, you turn well, around that was my, my first reaction was to definitely do that because yeah. this is wrong and yeah. yeah and and i was quite upset yeah no and and, and definitely i think a perfectly normal and natural response to have. And, and I think so many of us go there and then just stay there. Yeah. Yeah. But what you did was that's, I, I want to commend you for that because that's exactly what you should do because you can't control what they're going to do. Right. But you can look at yourself. So I yeah. just want to commend you for that. That's, that's well, thank terrific. you because it, that, it turned out to be completely transformative. And one of the times that I, you know, it's funny, I, I went through my life thinking that I was always fighting for myself. And what I realized was that I was just fighting against myself in order to be right all the damn time. And sort of looking, instead of looking inside and going, okay, well, there was something wrong. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Surely yeah. there's something I can figure out. Yeah. Wow. So, so it went something like that. So yeah. you, you looked at yourself and what did you find? Well, so I, I took a big, took a big look and well, one of the first realization was that either I was doing my, had no desire or, or did not wish to do my job or was incapable of doing my job to an extent where it would be easily recognizable by those who employed me to, to go, okay, yeah, that's our guy. Uh, and so there was obviously something holding me back and what were those things that I was ignoring? And the things that I was ignoring was that, well, one, I had made this institution my pie in the sky, and it wasn't. Yeah. And when I found that out, rather than confronting that directly, I decided that I was going to, um, well, just kind of crawl forward rather than actually examining all of my true possibilities. Because when you have a job, your possibilities are always constrained by, okay, well, how am I going to get the money to do the things that I have to do, not the things that I want to do. Um, and so there's, there's all of that going, going on in my mind. And then uh, I guess I'm going to pat myself on the back a little bit here, but uh, in the first meeting the, uh, that I had when I got the harsh news, my reaction was, well, you know, I feel like, and I did it in kind of a bitter, resentful way, which I don't like, but I was angry at the time, so I'll forgive myself. I really took it as, well, look, you're, you're, you're releasing me, and now let me show you guys what I'm capable of doing. And so there was a little bit of that revenge and all yeah. that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but it was but it was true in a way because it was true in a way that I could okay well now I really hadn't I'd been blinded by the confines of having this job and that 
the job was a needed and necessary thing. And whereas there was a, there, there was an opening that came from them releasing me from my shackles that I never knew that they had placed around my ankle, mm -hmm. which was the mental shackle of, oh, I need this for money, or I need this for other people to see me as doing something worthwhile, or things that I can be proud of and to display before others that will judge me thereby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I started, I guess what happened was I, I started to look inside and go, I don't care about any of all that. I know what I'm good at. I know what's so right and, and, and proper for me. And I know God wants that for me. So hey, you had taken this turn towards God before losing this job? Okay. So no, I hadn't really done that yet, but I was more open. I had l released the militant part of my atheism. Okay. But I was still pretty atheistic. Okay. So I wasn't quite able to articulate it that way yet. Okay. Okay. But it was a okay, well something's wrong. How are we going to find out what's wrong? Okay. And so I I started reading and I started it was, there was this split in my mind. It was between, am I going to be the person that, that goes down the path of what's available out there for me to fulfill, or am I going to be a person that is going to hold down the weeds and create a new path? And I think I was really scared of doing the second choice. Okay. Okay. Very, I think I was really scared of that because you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to be entrepreneurial. You're supposed to provide safety. Uh, my background is I'm an, an only child of an only child, and you could almost think of it as single mom to single mom. Um, so I've, I've got a lot of that desire for control and safety, I think, built into me, and I've really had to pull back the curtain of my own ego to see what's been playing in the back of my mind to, to, to get to the point to realize that, yeah, a lot of what I had believed in was very risk adverse. Mm -hmm. And by being risk adverse, I would actually set myself up for traps to where I wouldn't take the appropriate amount of risk to where that would allow me to succeed. I would only take the appropriate amount of risk to where I could guarantee failure. Okay. Okay. And that's 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 a pretty strange way to put it, but I, I think it's I think it's right because you can you can be out there kind of fishing around doing things half assed that'll guarantee that you don't ever do anything in, innovative or you can really well take the step off the cliff edge and and hope that the invisible bridge is there. And, 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 and really go for it and do fully commit to the things that you know are right rather than leaving yourself a toehold in the safety that's, that's behind you. Okay. So what have you done? Are you go back to teaching or are you doing your own thing or what? So this is it. Yeah. My big choice is, well, I've got enough money saved up that I can actually fully commit to making some changes that I think are, are very vital and, and they're going to start with me. Um, mm. and cause I'd always been providing very much for what I was told was supposed to be right rather than what I actually believed was right. Mm -hmm. And until I was able to get to the point where I felt like I was really listening to God for what was correct and right and moral and, and good to build on, to, to make my life to be something that I was would be, would be seen as worthy when I die, mm -hmm. then how am I going to live my life? And so, I think the way to do that is to is it had been there in front of me all the time, and we've got thousands of years worth of records in the Bible that I've been ignoring. And so, one of the things that, that I did was to actually go instead of oh, one of those things I'm going to get around to one of these days is read the Bible. Is oh, hey, I'm going to read the Bible, and when I wake up, <laughs> <laughs> imagine that <laughs> actually read it, instead right? Of talk about instead it instead of like yeah, okay, well it says this weird stuff, right? And who would believe that? Ha huh? ha! And then you can ignore it as, as for as long as you want, and then you actually start reading it. This is what happened to me. Uh, I, I would read it, and it would get very personal. Like you could almost imagine 
especially if I was reading a gospel that the, a parable or something was specifically about about my life and and the gospels are written in such an amazing way that they seem to really they well this is the effect they had on me that it was almost like being able to communicate across across a vast distance of time because these were written thousands of years ago but they were written the stories were written in such a way that they can connect to any just about any human experience that is that uh, we know of so far and that when I was fine, I finally let go of all the, I really want this to be wrong. So let me read the Bible for, to find out why it's silly and stupid and started to read it for, okay, well, it's thousands of years old. What have I been missing? Am I greater than the ancestors of thousands of years old ago that bothered to collect all this material can that at least got me to the point of, of, of reading it. Right. Can you give me an example? So of it being personal for me? Yeah. Let's see. So I was having a read through and I think I read, and, and it's funny how you'll, you'll come back to a, a particular parable over, over and over again. So I, I was thinking of the parable of the talents in, in Matthew and how were the, the, the three servants or slaves, depending on which translation you're using, are all receiving money from their master. And the one that is the most able receives the most money. The one that is of medium ability receives a medium amount of money. And the one that has the least amount of money gives the least amount of money. Yeah. And, but it's all fair. It's here, here's what you've done so far. What can you do next? Yeah. And isn't that how you should live your life? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and what have you been proven worthy of so far? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the master isn't just some random master. He's, you know, God patting us on our heads saying, look, you did, you good, you did a good job with all this that I gave you. Great. Here's some more. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and only to the last guy that he says, well, look here, I gave you something. You did nothing. You did nothing. Yeah. Anybody can do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I picked you. <laughs> but so who are you in that story? So for most, most of my life, I was, was I was the, the third servant. Hmm. Yeah. Um, definitely the third servant. Um, expectant of, the things that I was born into. And I include in that not only a um, being born in the West uh, and, and being born into uh, a, a wealthy, a wealthy family, but also to um, because I had resources in, in the beginning, never really having any respect for them, mm. what it took to earn them. Because I, I, I inherited a lot of money early on and I ended up mismanaging it out of my own arrogance and pride that, oh, well, only an idiot would, would mismanage it. And, well, I guess I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find that out the hard way or not. <laughs> and so, yeah, well, and so you can be all resentful for that, but then what are you going to do with that knowledge? Yeah, because there's a reason why God led you down that path, and He didn't just say, "Here's everything that you could ever possibly imagine and want. Live in luxury and peace. Goodbye." Yeah, because that wasn't the message I got from God. Hey, hang on one second. Hey, hey. yeah, I'm, done. I'm working. I'm working with something right now. I'll be done maybe one ish. Yeah. Okay. Just be here after that. I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be here between. I'll be here often. Sorry about that. When people see my car, I don't have a secretary or anything, so they just knock on my door and. Yeah, it's all you or nobody, right? It's, yeah. it's me, baby. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, well, so the message I got was, all right, well, here's the harsh reality. What are you going to do with it? 
obviously you weren't prepared in a way to handle all that money. Well, what was it about you that made you ill prepared? Hmm. And I ignored that through my next journey, I suppose, which was to take up teaching. Um, and, and I think the serenity prayer comes, comes to mind a whole lot and, and the, the wisdom to know what you can change rather than raging against that which you cannot. Um, and, and always look inwardly first and then well, what can I change around me smallest that's, I can test out, make sure I'm not hurting anybody by transmitting my beliefs. And then what, what's the step forward from there? And so, yeah, take it slow, easy steps and then see what grows from it. Mm. And, if, and if you start getting fruit, then grow more of that. Yeah. You know, it takes, pe people don't often realize how much strength it takes to be self-critical in, in a healthy way. But if you can do that, there's so much, I mean, that's because we can't change other people. We, we can, we can only work on ourselves. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not at all surprised to hear what you're saying, but I, I do want to commend you because that's, this is how we grow. This is how we learn. And it's, and it's interesting. So, so how have you seen that play out in terms of your turn from atheism to faith? Yeah, let's see. So, well, the big thing was rule eight, tell the truth or at least don't lie. And, and I really tried to do that as much as I could. And to, and that, as I started to do that, I, it was, it became very apparent to me that, well, that I needed to stop acting in way that would act, acting in ways that would force me to lie. Because there were a lot of things that I didn't want other people to know about. And then when I started reading uh, and, a good, and a good friend of mine who's been a Christian all of his life recommended that I read the Gospel of John. And when I read that, I thought, dear God, that's so right. All the stuff that I didn't want anybody to know about, mm -hmm. how much energy was I spending on that? When I could have just let the, line, the light shine on everything that I do, and I could have an immense amount of satis satisfaction and peace from that. And in fact, the more I understand that, the more that I can speak truth in the word and I can see it heal people. And so the path that that allowed me to take was the new relationships that I've formed since just towards, well, it's only really been a few months now, have been completely open and honest. Mm. And I don't bother with the, well, I really care about, I, I care what you think, sure. but I don't bother with the, okay, well, how do I need to behave in order for you to think a certain way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's way too much, way, way too much for me to deal with. Yeah. Here's what I am. Here's what I believe. Let's just talk truth to each other because the, the other thing is way too exhausting. I, yeah. I can't do the other thing. I've done it for, you know, 44 years and yeah. I'm too old for that. No, yeah. With that. Oh. And so the more the more I did that, the 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 easier and the more clear my path became. And every time I had to make a choice, so I was presented with a, a choice for my last job, and the last and it presented me with a couple of situations that just made my guts wrench. And then it was because I was going to have to act out an untruth, mm. and I'd become so sensitive to that that I I knew I I wasn't going to be able to do that job without. Uh, drinking myself to death more than yeah. likely. Would be yeah. The yeah. Of that. Now, now I would, you know, a couple times you've said something like, you know, you're hearing God. Now imagine you're, you know, you remember yourself as an atheist. Oh man, that would have sounded absolutely insane. Yeah. How you would hear that. So try and explain that a little yeah. bit to someone, because I've got a lot of atheists who do watch my channel. How, yeah. how, how could they understand this change in language that you're making? Well, it, it was it was slow. So, this is why you have to you have to love yourself in order to be able to approach God. And it's and, and because if you're coming about it with a mindset of self loathing or there's something wrong with me, then that makes it harder for God to talk to you. I believe. Um, and so, what did it feel like? Um, and I, I would couch my words in, in the beginning, and and I would be feel very restrained about speaking of it in terms of like I just did with, well, being able to hear God. But 
it, it honestly was the the easiest way to put it and the most <laughs> the most economically feasible as far as the language goes and then when i realized that i'm like well there's there's got to be a reason for that so there's something very very natural about wanting to use the word god to describe certain things about the way we behave and the way the world works and so there's nothing wrong with that so that was one step so i didn't have to be super scared about the whole mysticism thing and I, i'd actually written a little post uh, because I went back to some of my old atheistic forms to see how they would treat my journey. And so I got some decent engagement off of it. But uh, the, the main point is I was, I hadn't quite committed to Christianity at this point. What, what I, but when I, I, I guess I was at the point of, well, Hey, let's go explore these things instead of instantly dismissing them. And so I was, I was reading something out of, well, I was starting to read the Bible more. And my post was just because something is tied in mysticism doesn't mean we get to automatically dismiss it. And so, cause what are you, what are you missing out on? And so having that mindset and being able to go on, well, okay, what made this useful? Why was this useful? Why did people, just so readily accept the usage of the word God for something that's so mysterious and beyond, uh, and beyond being, but true at the same time. Um, and I, and I think the reason for that is, is just, it needs to be a little bit mysterious because God is very personal for most of us. Um, and if you're going to church or have been to a church service and, and and looked around you and thought, I don't think and believe like these people. Well, yeah, of course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and no, you don't have to be like the lady swinging in the aisles <laughs> in the presence of God for you to get your thing out of it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a lot in a short time. <laughs> <laughs> and And... Uh, so I went, uh, I, I explored a lot of the, the churches around and a lot of them were these fairly large mega churches that, had, that learn how to put on a, on a really good show that attracts people. Yeah. And, you know, and I was a little resentful about them for a while, but I realized that, well, any path that lets you take that first step to God is, is, is a good virtuous one. And so I don't get too bad on the, on the, uh, on the big mega churches, although I do kind of feel like a small, close knit church is 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 the one for me. Yeah. So I don't. Know, that was a lot of rambling there, but I hope. No, no, it was good. It was good. Was helpful. Yeah. That was helpful. So I I have got I got conversations stacked up. So I I wish we had more time. We can talk again sometime. I'd be happy to. Yeah. But um, you know, we got about we got about twenty minutes left. So I don't want to. I, it, my pastor mode is I just keep poking and asking questions and that's do what it. I do. So, hey, but I don't want well, to, do, I don't want to take our whole time doing that. What did you want to talk to me about? Well, I just want to share. I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in, in what seems to be a phenomenon that is starting to bubble back up to the surface, which is getting this, I think we've been disconnected for a very long time and that we hit the radio and television era and that allowed us to get our news sources from a very streamlined source and to be narrowed down. And, and I think what I've been discovering in, well, there's a young man that, that made a Jordan Peterson uh, meetup group uh, in the area where I am. And we were, uh, been, we've been able to get, together uh and just have great conversations uh from those kinds of little small localized uh meetings that are that tend to be face to face and, and you have like just a few people talking at a time and we're gonna we're gonna practice and distill that format down but what i from my readings and things that i've done uh i'm really i'm a really big i'm a big fan of carl rogers uh, who is who's who you probably heard of from dr peterson a few times and and his i guess call to fame or at least the thing that i that i that really stands out for me is the ability of humans to 
really do something magical and special for themselves when they get in the small group together, let all the shields down yeah. and talk truth. Yeah. 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 And, and it heals in a way that is like biblical healing. Like everything that I've, that I've ever read in the Bible about that being a miracle, that sounds like a miracle to me because I've seen some pretty amazing things happening. And when the more that happens, we don't do that enough. I think if, if, if we got together in small groups and, and, and talked and didn't try to worry about pleasing the other person so much as, as to as so much as to say what you think is true and is relevant and and good to say at the time, not just because you're dying to say something, but because this it, it really is something that needs to be said, then you get some really amazing conversations that reveal truths in ways that are very rare these days. Uh, and so I, I think my the next part of my journey is to, um, well, obviously we've been given the internet for a reason through all of our hard work and, and all this, and and it's and like most things created by man, it can either be it's it's a, it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. And so it can either get clamped all the way down, or it can be made for the for one of the greatest goods that we've ever known. And I think the way to make it the greatest good is to encourage people to get themselves a camera and a microphone and get on the net and talk to people in small groups in, in ways where you can feel like you can, you can really share and, and be open and not worry about the other person judging you. Because when we're spending time dancing around all this, the pain that comes from not wanting to expose ourselves fully because we know that if we reveal something vulnerable about ourselves, then we, well, we make ourselves vulnerable. And how is that person going to hurt or hurt us back at that? And if we make that first leap and go, here I am, let me tell you something about me that, that yeah. could be spun back on us that in a way that is, that could be really painful if someone laughed at an experience of yours, of yours, for, for example. And then instead of being your worst fears being confirmed where someone does laugh and make fun of you, they go, that reminds me of this situation that I had and it was almost identical to that. And they share something back. You have just made a friend for life. And you don't have to have the whole world be your friend, but you do need those people that are going to treat you that way. And, and I, and I think that with 7 billion people on the planet, we need to start using this technology to bring us, to bring us closer together, have very intense, small conversations, small groups, uh, that let everybody share and no one has to feel like they're in the shadows hiding. Yeah. Cause I think the shadows are where the dark things in our hearts really do grow and prevent us from, because we all have these feelings of, of, you know, of darkness and, 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 and pain and, and we don't want to deal with them. Uh, so we tend to ignore them, but, I think what needs to happen is you have to share some of some of the things about yourself that you're the most scared to share. So, so you've um, you and someone else have, have started a meetup, and how many times mm -hmm. have you met? So we've got um, a local one, which is sort of the big fisher's net to see who comes in, yeah. and then online we will do um, so on on my channel, and I and I tend to record them because I think. Well, I never know where the conversations go, but there, yeah. there's always something interesting that comes out of them. Yeah. Um, but on on Monday and Tuesday evenings, I've been I've been throwing open my channel for just live long conversations for as long as they need to go. Oh. And 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 especially young men, they're hungry for more. Yeah, they're like oh, a chance where someone's not going to. Well, I don't have to go through this filter of society. I can just say what I need to say. And if I get wrong feedback from these guys or feedback that I don't like, then they're going to tell it to me in a way that helps me understand why they believe what, what they believe rather than I must bow down to my ideological God and support it in, 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 in service to whatever the whim of, of the time happens to be. Um, because that really stifles truth and when we can't speak truth something inside of us rots away yeah yeah it's true it's true 
because I feel fed like I've never felt fed before in my entire life when I can have these conversations with, that's especially that's... with other other young men. Yeah. I mean, like really, like what I'm doing matters, big time matters. Yeah, yeah. So, so have you resolved the? Um, I know you're you're living off some savings. Have you? I, I went to your blog a little bit and poked around. You're doing some web stuff, or, or I'm what? so all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and and I, and I, I guess. Well, the balancing act is, you know, what, what, how, how much do I spend on creating the background and how much do I, and how much, and by spend, I mean time more than anything else. Right. That's, we can't get back and I'll live in poverty for as long as I need, so as long as I feel like <laughs> I'm doing the right thing. But uh, I think that if you are doing the right thing, then you'll, you'll end up get, being rewarded for that. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try and, and host host these online sessions and to put my blog stuff out there. And, yep. and if it gets, yep. if it gets noticed, then it, then it gets, then it gets noticed and, yep. and, and I'll continue to do that. Yep. And if it, and if it doesn't, then well, then my message needs to be refined or it, the time is not right for my message or my message is wrong. So. Well, I, I think, you know, as you said, I, and, and this comes, I mean, we're, we're finally, you know, as a Christian, we're finally, as you said in the parable of the talents, we're, we're accountable to an audience of one. Mm -hmm. And I think culturally, we place a lot of emphasis on size, you know, mega churches. Uh, you know, Jesus, you, you would think, you would think if, if Jesus thought like this, he would have tried to present to his audience of thousands up in the Galilee you know, some, some whiz bang, surefire program with eight steps and four rules and, 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 and everybody to follow this and then we'll remake the world into a glorious kingdom of God. He doesn't do that. He's got, doesn't happen he's that got way, 12 yeah. disciples, which is clearly mirroring the, the 12 tribes. He's got three in his inner circle. And when it comes down to the moment of his greatest trial, they all run. And only yeah. John, who probably at that point is a boy, is there at the crucifixion with the women with all the big men hiding somewhere. So, you know, God loves small things. And I, you know, you know I, I've, I, I love pastoring a small church. I, it's so often the case that God does his best works without the cameras on mm. in, in places where just like you described, people are talking together. They're not trying to impress each other. They're not lying as Peterson says, but they're, they're not, they're not lying. And, right. and so I, you know, I, I can see in your face, the joy that you found in doing what you're doing. So I, I pray that God gives you the resources to, to do it as, yep. as that would be a wonderful blessing. If that, if that is what he has in store for me. That yeah. Would be yeah. You know, a very wonderful blessing indeed. Thank you so much. You know, and it's, it's, you know, it's not unlike being married, you're married to one person. And if you're married a long time, you begin to discover, I mean, Tim Keller says in his book, how, you know, everyone marries the wrong person. You, you just don't figure that out to a few years after you're married. And then, <laughs> and then the, the, the test of marriage is to, is to then, you know, make it, make it go with that person. That's the reason arranged marriages have worked for a long time or because we change all the time. So yeah. it's, I, I really appreciate what you're doing with, you know, transparent, authentic conversations one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. I mean, churches, the big churches, the irony is that the big churches, they have the big show and that's got its they own. They talk the least. Yeah, yeah. But, but then they, oh, we got to do small groups. But big churches always struggle with the small group thing because mm -hmm. big churches realize it's often at that level. If you've got a thousand people in a church, not everybody can sit and talk to the pastor. Yeah. You're just too darn busy. So what you're doing is what you're doing is what the church has always done. It's people often get confused that it's the big show, but the right. big show has its place, but it's, it's the relationships. It's the face-to-face -face relationships where people know each other for the good and the bad. I think so too. Um, and I, it's, it's, I guess I've tried to think about it in this way. Um, 
I think the diversity of the church is, is really important. And one of the places where diversity is kind of ignored because we tend to, well, like most people, we grow up, I think, a little bit rebellious against whatever institution we're born into. And if you have another church that's slightly different, maybe that gives young people something to fall into instead of, instead of, uh, because I, I, I've, I thought about this very seriously in that it doesn't really matter whether we are growing up in a way to understand God, or is it that God is slowly revealing himself to us over time? And I think it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter, or it's a combination of the both. And if that's true, then that means that our, either our understanding of God or God himself is evolving in some way. Well, I think God is continuing to change us. The Christian story presupposes that what God does in our lives, usually at his own timing, in his own way, is he draws us into the likeness of his son, which is also, you know, you individually I mean, we're not all duplicates of a first century man born in Bethlehem who grew up in Nazareth. Right. God shapes us according to, you know, the, the creation that he's, he's making us to be. And this is, this, our, our world, our life right here is just the first chapter in this far larger story. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And which is, I think, why the Bible is so brilliant now that I having having actually taken the time to read to read some of it, oh, that that uh, it's such an unbelievable document and that it can it can be so personal even though it's so so ancient, and so that that speaks to the things within us that are ancient and do not change, as well as to the things that uh, have to grow in order for us to reach the kingdom of heaven. It, it's an astounding thing because I can pull. I can pull books off my shelf that are a hundred years, only a hundred years old. And I'll look at them and already it's archaic, it's past, but to think about this book and not only to think about it in terms of time, but in terms of cultures, mm -hmm. you know, I tell this story often missionaries go into a jungle somewhere and they learn the language of a tribe and they, they, they try then to render they people didn't have a written language. So they develop a written language and they teach the people their own written language and they translate the Bible and they give it right. to them. And sometimes the missionaries leave and these people, well, they'll do things that to us kind of look crazy, but they, they get the book and yeah. they're interested in the book. That, that is a, people don't realize what a miraculous thing, just that fact just is. Just that part. Yeah. And, and so here how, you how are. How do you write something like that? That's unbelievable. That's yeah. a miracle of itself, right? It there. is. It really is. Yeah. So we, we've got about five minutes. So if there's anything you want to say, oh, I, I wanted to talk to Paul Zing about this. So. Let's see. Um, well, how much work, because I think a lot of what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to focus my attention on undoing the work that Stephen Jay Gould did, <laughs> which is to talk about non-overlapping non, non magisterium, which is how he put science and religion. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I think that's a big problem. Yeah. And, and it's a big problem because our creative talents are unleashed in 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 a particular direction when we take keep God in mind. And they are very destructive when we do not. Yeah. And the twentieth century has been constant stark reminders of how well we can do we can do that when we don't take care to what for what we create. And we already have multiple ways of destroying the world over. And we've had ridiculous wars and famines, as I'm sure you know about. So I guess I, to me, it's really important to find a way that lets people feel okay again with being oriented towards God and not having to feel like they need to defend themselves for some ancient mystical belief that only fools would believe in. Because that was definitely the problem that I had for a long time. And because it's not that at all. In fact, it's something that I think is, is absolutely necessary and key for the survival of mankind. So, so what, I know, so what am I going to do with that? Yeah. Plan? Yeah. So the plan then is to, 
try and merge the Bible back with science a little bit more. Cause right now okay. it seems like we've got two, we've got two camps Yeah, and e either one of them is doomed to die on its own. So you're, so you've got some training in, in the sciences. I'm, I'm a biologist and, uh, and I've read a lot of, uh, Dawkins, R Richard Dawkins work. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and because I went through militant atheism, I went through, I know a lot of the science and the background for it. So and, have you started working on this? Because this is an area that, that, you know, a number of Christians are working in and in, in various ways. Yeah. So who are you reading and have any initial thoughts? So uh, one book on my plate is, uh, I keep forgetting his name. I really, really, I should really know it. Uh, the gentleman that, that headed the, uh, the Human Genome product, Project. Oh, yeah. Philip uh, Francis Collins. Francis, Francis Collins. Um, the, uh, the Language of God. The Language of God, yeah. Yes. Have yeah. you read that? Yeah, yeah. I've read, I've, I've, I didn't finish the book. I've read part of the book. Okay. Um, yeah, because he's a very interesting I, guy. I think that's right up my alley. And, and the way I've been able to, as I've been reading through the Bible, I'm like, well, God, I don't think this has been reconciled with what we now know and what God has slowly revealed to us. Have you, have you found the biologos.org website? Biologos. No, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Think. Biologos. Francis Collins helped found Biologos and um, has some, I'm um, from the Christian Reformed Church has some Calvin College, an ex-Calvin College people, uh, the Harmsmas. It's a husband and wife. He's a physicist. She's, I don't know what her, she, got, she used to teach at Calvin College. Now she's leading the BioLogos. Um, so there's, there might be some interesting materials there that you'd be interested in. There's, a, there's an outfit out of England, uh, Justin Brierly. He has a, what's been a radio program for years called Unbelievable. Oh yeah, I, I listened to Peterson on on his. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you go back that. in the archives of that, he he works on that kind of stuff a lot, and you'll find a lot of a lot of scientists who come on his show and talk about points with that, and and you know that people often think that you know Christians are all young Earth creationists, or but really there's a huge diversity among Christians yeah. on many of these questions. That was Another, my original push away from Christianity was, oh, well, you guys think you have it all figured, figured out already, yeah. which is absolutely not the truth. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that was what led me to atheism was the false belief that Christians believed they knew everything. Yeah. And, yeah. and another, another resource is the Veritas Forum. Okay. That they do a lot of those conversations too. They'll have, say, a a scientist who is a believer and a scientist who's a skeptic and, yeah. and they'll have, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's all these long form, civil, productive, meaningful conversations started with Peterson. Actually, there've been a number of places in the Christian world right. where we've been doing this for a long time. BioLogos right. and BioLogos Veritas and Unbelievable. All three have been having these things online. It's just that it's it's not all the gotcha moments which right. tends to fuel hit bait. Mm -hmm. So right. there there are a lot of good resources out there. So you'll have uh, you'll have plenty of good company, I think. I think so too. I'm going to take a look, and so that's where I'll go from this. That's got, that's pretty much why I wanted to have the conversation. I knew there would be something great that would come out of it in some direction that I would get, and so I'm going to go that way. Good. Well, Thanks. what I'll what I'll do is I will. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Zoom render this thing Zoom's and then thing, I'll post yeah. it on my channel and I'll send you a copy in case you want to post it too. That would and, be amazing. Thank you. And we'll we'll take it from there. So I really appreciate your time, Paul. It's been very valuable for me. Well, thank you, Carl. And I I I wish you God's blessings. Is I mean you're just you're just getting started, baby. It's and I just <laughs> I'm drinking from the fire hose as fast as right. I can. <laughs> I just I pray that God use you and and do wonderful things through you. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it.